Hello and welcome back to module four of this European Schoolnet e-learning academy on developing digital skills in the classroom. Module four is all about how to program machines. And we're now on the fourth section of module four, which is an introduction to educational robotics. In this short video, we're gonna have a little bit of an introduction. I'm gonna hand you over to, in a minute to my colleague, Tulia Urschitzer, who will be providing you with that introduction. And then after that, in the second video, we're gonna be having a look at how we might get started with educational robotics. Before we do that, I just wanted to emphasize it's a really, really exciting time for educational robotics in our schools. Never before have we had so many physical and virtual resources that we could potentially use with our students. From B-Bots to Lego We Do to Lego Mindstorm kits, there really are now a rich variety of resources out there. And if we can't afford the physical resources, a rich variety of virtual simulated resources to help young people get better and better at working with machines and working with robots. And it's not just uh, resources that are aimed at the secondary school either. Increasingly, we're starting to see more and more resources aimed at the very, very early years age groups, moving up through the primary and into the secondary schools. Bo and Yana is a great example of that. We've also got Cubelets and we've also got the Spark Sphere as well. Some really, really exciting stuff. And then there are some other great developments across Europe as well, perhaps the most famous being in the UK, where the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation, is proposing to give every 11-year-old a microbit, a small microbit computer, in many ways quite similar to the Raspberry Pi. And if that doesn't help generate a, digi uh, a generation of digital makers, I'm not quite sure what will. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand you over to Tilia and she's going to be taking you through a little introduction to how we can program machines. Welcome everyone. My name is Tulia Urshitz. I'm a math and science teacher in a junior secondary school in Italy. And I also have some lessons at the kindergarten and primary school. The drawing in this slide, in fact, was done by one of my students and shows my work in the vertical curriculum from the first to the eighth grade. Since November 2013, I'm Italian Scientix Ambassador. During the last uh, seven years, uh, I've been using educational robotics inside my teaching, collaborating with the School of Robotics in Genoa to engage more boys and girls into STEM subjects. Educational robotics is a methodology that involves the use of robotics to generate the competencies inside the regular curricula. It has the aim to involve students of all ages, from kindergarten to high school, in the study of STEM subjects with a new approach. Technological tools may promote inclusion. That means that talented students and students with learning difficulties can easily work together. Anyway, Technological tools do not automatically guarantee good results without suited pedagogical approaches. We therefore need to understand why and how we should use robotics in our teaching. The use of educational robotics encourages students in guided discovery and in problem solving. Students get used to work in teams to solve problems find solutions, and verify results. As robots are commonly associated with games, robotics kits thereby are learning mediators. They combine the restrictions or restriction of knowledge the students get during the school activities with the creation, invention, and the conceptualization, developing skills and competencies along the way. Learning emerges from cooperative working, from a new role of teacher, who becomes a simply a facilitator of the learning process. Robotics involves students with different cultures, linguistic heritage, age, learning styles, gender. Girls love robots and are more engaged in STEM subjects when working with robots. Educational robotics can easily find a place in traditional math and science curricula to develop key competencies. It increases learning motivation, the use of a proper language, 
the growing of mathematical, scientific, and digital skills helps to develop entrepreneurship. First of all, we have to remember that the key competencies are a combination of knowledge, skills, and attitudes. The key competencies identified by the European Commission for the Lifelong Learning are those described hereafter. Key competencies are very important for personal fulfillment and development, for social inclusion, active citizenship, and employment. Designing, building, and programming robots means having to share ideas, drawings. It means collaborating, team working. The continuous exchange of ideas among the members of the group enables the improvement of, a communica of communicative skills of the students who must uh, uh, communicate their own ideas clearly and synthetically at many levels through many means of communication, design, text, uh, technical text, uh, and oral communication. In order to be able to conduct research and be able to build robots, students spontaneously work with the foreign languages, reading instructions, find information on the internet, and sometimes also working on web conferences on common projects with peers from abroad. The obvious link between robotics and mathematical, scientific, and technological disciplines often makes it more difficult to understand how radically the lesson of these subjects can change from the methodological uh, and process point of view uh, with the introduction of the use of robots. Educational robotics uh, enables the understanding of scientific topics uh, from various points of view and makes them more comprehensible to different types of learners. Furthermore, the conception of an error changes radically. The error is no longer seen as judgment but as an incentive to change one's own skills. Digital competencies is a key competence evidently linked to, with educational robotics. In order to program robots, it is necessary to use computers. Furthermore, working with robotics inside the discipline's curricula often requires to record data or to present the results of the whole projects. Uh, that's why students use many digital tools and apps. The role of teacher changes when working with educational robotics. The teacher becomes a coach. He has the task to coordinate activities. Students are pushed into learning processes linked with observation, experimentation, abstraction, and theorization, becoming able to build their own awareness and explicit way of learning. Team working and the acceptance of contribution from each member uh, of the team allow students to recognize differences and accept them to improve the work of the group. Recognizing and collaborating with, different, uh, with diversity are two components of the social aspects that educational robotics contributes to develop. Sense of initiative and entrepreneurship are experienced by students at many different levels, through the sharing of their own ideas during the robot design, listening to the ideas of classmates, through the management of the group, through the proposal of personal solutions at the programming level. Cultural awareness and expression are competencies that are usually presented through creativity. There are many students who reprocess the robot idea, creating innovative and aesthetic design and personalization of the robot. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that. Thank you, Tilia. Lots and lots for us to think about there and lots and lots for you to go away and think about how can you apply that information both in your classroom and within your own education system. I'll see you in the next video when we're going to be having a closer look at programming machines. In particular, we're going to be trying to get you started with some practical exercises. See you then.